Welcome to another episode of the show, our second solo episode. Years ago, years back, I went through depression and um, to me, there's different kinds of triggers or different, different reasons why we become depressed. I think there's two kinds of depression. Uh, one is where you clearly know why you're depressed. A loss of a loved one, um, a divorce, um, a breakup, and you clearly know why you're depressed. Number two is the one that's internally that you, you're not sure exactly why you're depressed. And it's uh, kind of like a medical condition. Um, it's internally you, there's bouts of it and people who experience this kind of depression, it can hit them at any time of the day. Daytime, nighttime, they can wake up one morning and just feel depressed and they're not sure exactly why. And that usually requires uh, some kind of medication or therapy. And I've had a couple friends that have fought this kind of depression and still fight it to this day. It doesn't always go away. A lot of times it doesn't. It just, you just learn to cope with it in your own way. And luckily for me, the depression that I went into was, I knew exactly why I was depressed. I was in a long, uh, a long relationship, and after I, after we broke up, sort of, because we did break up on a few occasions, but this one, I guess I knew it was done, it was over. Uh, after I, uh, I went through this breakup, uh, I instantly started having a lot of regrets, a lot of you know why me or what did I do wrong or I, I could have done this or I should have done this and I can't really pinpoint where exactly um, my depression started like when I can't just think back and say oh yeah I remember it being on this day uh, you know I was doing this and I just started becoming depressed I don't really remember um, but if I can take it all the way from the beginning and just kind of let you know my experience with depression, what I learned from it, and in my own opinion of it, because again, there are different layers of depression, there's different ways of seeing depression, there's different causes of depression. So I can only tell you uh, what I've experienced and how I got over my depression. But in the beginning stage, after the breakup, I, um, I really thought it was my fault and I don't want to tell you that I had little like a little Tweety Bird in my ear telling me like you should have done this and you didn't do this but I kind of did and when you when you're thinking that it's your fault when you're thinking that this whole breakup and everything is because of you that's when you start really coming down on yourself and I think that's why I, I got so depressed because I was thinking, you know, you did this to yourself. You should have done this and you did this and, you know, I was putting the blame on me. So it was really hard for me to accept the breakup and accept the, you know, the consequences that came with it. The, the feeling of depression, let me tell you how it felt for me. And I always explain it to everyone like this. Imagine... Imagine when you're you're nervous and you're going maybe you're going to an interview or you're going up on stage and you're talking in front of a lot of people. Imagine that feeling like times two or three. And you only feel that feeling when you're about to do something or leading up to something. What I felt was that feeling all day long. I felt it 24/7. I felt it during the daytime while I was working. I felt it at night. Nights were the worst, I'll get into that after. Um, but it came to the point where I had to tell my supervisor, like, look, this is what happened to me and I'm going through this. I just wanna let you know, like, I'm, I'm still coming to work and I'm trying my best, but my, my mind is not there. And um, 
he understood luckily and I just had a hard time and I think it was it was around the holidays which makes it even worse that's when you don't want to have depression or sadness of any kind is around the holiday season and I just remember it being a 24-7 thing the scary part was nighttime because at night I knew I was going home to a dark place now let me kind of paint out this picture for you why the depression was so you know uh, the, uh, why it affected me so much that same year which I remember it to this day everything was happening everything was crumbling it was the worst time of my life I was you know I had conflict with my family there was a couple of them that I wasn't getting along with I wasn't talking to after the breakup because we lived with each other I ended up moving out and I had nowhere to go so my dad took me in and my dad told me okay you can live with me no problem you don't have to pay rent or you do whatever you can or you try to help out whatever way you can and I moved in with my dad and my brother and it was a it was more like a studio but there was a one bedroom and it was more like a more like a hallway sort of like there would be the living room and then went hallway and then it did one one bedroom and a bathroom so it wasn't really like a full apartment but it was three guys packed in and the hard part was I wasn't even talking with my brother so me and my brother was not on speaking terms which made it even harder so while I was living there which was the course of um, probably close to a year or so maybe over a year we would just pass by each other in the kitchen the bathroom or whatever and we hardly said a word to each other which was even worse and being that I had you know my brother was there before me living with my dad um, he had the parking stall he had the room and this was Waikiki so if you live on Oahu Waikiki is the worst place you want to live because the parking situation is bad so every time I come home I would have to at least circle around for at least 30 minutes sometimes more just to find parking it was that bad and no matter how hard of a day or long of a day I had I had to come home to that and that was already stressful as it is and I had to sleep in the living room my dad was on the couch I was on a mattress with like a shelf to my name with all my stuff and everything and I had to sleep on the the, the ground on the mattress and listen to my dad snore every night and it was very depressing I had just quit my job um, I was at a job for a good a good five years or so really good job but you know they went in another direction I didn't agree with it so I ended up leaving that job and I just had my business and all of this along with the breakup and thinking oh she's with him now because there was another guy in the picture um, she didn't cheat on me but there was another guy in the picture after I you know so with all that combined I was a wreck I was a total wreck I mean my heart was like just I felt like my heart was like this just non-stop um, again that nervous feeling all day long 24 7 and it never left the, the only thing I had at that time now this is you know again not getting along with my family not we're not on speaking terms um, I'm not agreeing with them we're not seeing eye to eye the only person I had at that time was my friend uh, my one friend because when you're in a relationship you not like you ditch your friends but you put so much focus and so much attention to that person that you're with that you kind of forget about everyone else around you so I was living in a bubble for a long period of time and so with that being said I lost contact with a lot of my friends so when the time came where I was depressed and I needed someone to talk to or hang out with everyone was pretty much gone and it was no one's fault but mine but I had one friend that's that stuck around and helped me through the whole thing and he knew what was going on and I just wanted to be around him during the depression I wanted to be around someone anyone so there was two ways that I uh, two ways that I I helped myself get through this depression 
one, my friend was there. We would go out and he would just lend that ear and he would just tell me things that I want to hear. And we would have this running joke where it's like, okay, do you want to hear the truth or do you want to hear what you want to hear? And there'll be times where I tell him, look, I don't want to hear the truth. Just tell me what I want to hear. And he'd be like, okay, you're great. You're awesome. And um, so he helped me, but I knew he also had his, you know, his wife as well. So he couldn't focus 100% on me. So there'll be times where he has to go, you know, we hang out and he has to leave at 7 p.m. And I remember it being just like leading up to that time where I knew he was going to leave me. I felt like nervous. It was it was almost like you were like you knew you were going to be alone and you just didn't want that one person to leave you. And that's how I felt. But he had his thing and I understood that and, you know, he had to go. He couldn't hang out with me all night long. I would have loved for him to sleep over and everything, but he had his own life. So um, that was one way I I coped with the depression. Number two, I worked out. I went to a gym and I was, I worked out as much as I could because it was almost like an, an anesthesia. It helped me get through all the feelings and the hurt that I was going through. It was like my medication really. So. I would exercise a lot. I would stay in the gym at night because at night was the worst time for me. I didn't want to be at home because it was it was very lonely and dark. It was like those movies that you see where you're you're stuck in a dark room like a horror movie or whatever and I just felt like that. I felt like the whole room was dark and quiet. No one was there and it was scary for me. I didn't want to be home by myself. So I'd go to the gym to be around people and besides exercise I was taking a yoga class that helped me get through this time period and even though I didn't know anyone in the yoga class just to be around surrounded by a bunch of people just I felt so good I just had to be around people and that was my thing and it got so bad that even on holidays like Thanksgiving so Thanksgiving usually the gyms close at about it's a half day thing, so it closes at like 1 p.m. maybe, 2 p.m. so that the staff can spend time with their family. I literally stayed in the gym all the way up until closing because that's how much I didn't want to leave. I wanted to be around light. I wanted to be around people. That's how scared and depressed I was. I didn't want to leave because I know as soon as the gym closes, I'm going back to my, uh, my dad's apartment and no one's home and I'm just, I, I'm, very you know I'm gonna feel lonely and depressed I didn't want to go back to that so it even got to the point where I had to for the first time in my life uh, I had to see a doctor and I had to get uh, medication for the depression and I literally had to get something to um, kind of make my heart my heart rate go down because I had that anxiety added on to it along with depression and I just felt like my heart was like this. So when I went to see a doctor, you know, I told her, look, I know why I'm depressed. I went through a breakup, this is what's going on and I need, I need something to just, something to get through this because I don't like the feeling of this. Even at night, you know, I have a hard time sleeping because my mind is racing and thinking, oh my God, why doesn't she, why doesn't she love me? You know, is she with this guy now? And I'm thinking all these things. And this, this medication, these pills that I was taking would help to ease it and let the heart rate go down. And that's the best way I can, I can describe it to you. It was for anxiety. And I had a lot of anxiety as well at the time. And um, those are some ways that I, I helped cope with the depression. And I never experienced this. I didn't know, you know, I've always thought before that, you know, that, that period I thought, well, depression is in the mind, like a lot of people think. Why don't you just get over it? Why don't you just get strong and just, you know, let go of this and, and get over it? And, and it wasn't that easy. And mind you that I come from an athletic background where I'm doing triathlons, marathons, long races where it takes hours of mental strength to get through it. 
and but I could not shake this off for the life of me I could not and I tried I tried my best and that's why it got so bad that I, I had to get medication and I remember the lobby of my dad's place because I spent a lot of nights down there it was so bad in the apartment with the tension between me and my brother that I just didn't want to be there especially if my dad wasn't there I didn't want to be in the same place as my brother because we were just beefing like that it was bad energy so I stayed in the lobby and I just used the Wi-Fi and I just stayed on my computer as long as I could and one of the nights that I remember that was the loneliest and the hardest was New Year's Eve and I remember staying in the lobby and being on the computer and I remember like emailing her too now mind you that depression it also makes you a little delusional um, when you're depressed and you're you're getting over a breakup or something like that uh, it makes you delusional and I remember emailing her on New Year's Eve and being like you know this is what you did to me I, I'm, I hope you're happy with that other guy and I'm in a lobby right now by myself on New Year's Eve and I'm not talking to my family and I'm doing this and I'm just so depressed and thanks a lot and I was so delusional I was blaming everything on her and I was just blaming the world because the last place you want to be on New Year's Eve is in a lobby on a computer by yourself no one around and that's how I spent one of my New Year's Eve um, I was talking to my mom at the time so I did call her I talked to her a little bit and I told her what I'm going through my depression and um, I just remember it being very lonely that night pretty much no one to celebrate it with you know I mean what do you do it's it's one thing to have depression it's another thing to not be talking to your family and all your friends are gone because you were in this plastic bubble where only she mattered and everyone else didn't matter and now you're paying for it and that's exactly what I knew happened at the time that night was really lonely and it was hard I you know at during that period I under I thought about it like everyone does with depression is you think okay I just want to end this misery uh, yeah, suicide does go through your head and I can't tell you that I contemplated it because honestly that's something that I knew deep inside no matter what I was not brave enough and yes I use the word brave you have to be brave to do something like that to inflict pain on you or jump off a building or hang yourself that takes a lot of guts and balls and I knew I didn't have that in me so I knew suicide was not the option but I did understand how someone could feel so much hurt and pain that they just want um, they want to make it end and I and I understood that I got it and for me it was getting the pills from my doctor and, and trying to <sighs> trying to get rid of it that way for others they take their life or they hurt themselves and thankfully I didn't get up to that point but I did understand how someone look guys uh, I'm not encouraging suicide I'm not I'm not saying you know someone has a right to do this whatever I know a lot of people think it's selfish but when you're in so much pain and I worked in a senior home so I know this when you're in so much pain you don't want to be around anymore and I know some of you might not understand this, but you have friends and family, they, they're in so much pain that they just wanna make it end. Whether it's medically, whether it's psychologically, they have a lot of demons and a lot of struggles. And the only way that they can think of to end that pain is to cause harm to themselves or to end their life. And I know I wasn't gonna do it, but I just wanna let you know that when you guys say, oh, it's it's selfish of them to do that. And what about their family and their friends? They're not thinking that. You gotta understand as well that depression is not something that you, you just, oh, I got depression, I'll get over it tomorrow. It is a, it's a medical condition. It's something that people really go through. And unless you're in it yourself, you have no idea how it feels. 
So it's not selfishness because they're not in their right state of mind. It's something that they're just trying to put themselves out of pain as fast as possible because it hurts that much to live with that on a daily basis 24 seven. So I understand that, but fortunately enough, I didn't get to that point. And my friend, exercise, everything helped me get through this period. I think the kicker was the one day I remember it being over, the one day I remember it, you know, where I just, st I didn't need the medication anymore. I stopped the pills was, I was going to enter a marathon. I was gonna race in a marathon. And I told my, my ex at the time, look, all I want is my son to be at the end of the marathon. That's all I want. I don't, whatever, you don't need to be with me. You don't need to see me. Just have him there at the end of the marathon because please, it would mean a lot to me if I saw him at the end. And I don't wanna get into the whole, you know, my son, because I talked about that in my, my first solo episode because that's a whole nother long story. But I'm gonna tell you this, when you're on a mission and you're struggling through something and there's a light at the end of the tunnel, it somewhat makes it easier to get there. And through 26.2 miles, I knew, and mind you, I went into this marathon uh, with almost no training. I went into it, I knew my son was gonna be at the end, at the finish line. And I pushed through every single mile. And it was possibly the most consistent pace I've ever gone at in any marathon that I've done with little to no training. And I got through it. And from that point on, I realized I don't need medication. I don't need the pills anymore. My son is there. And I got through the marathon. And after that point, I stopped using the pills. Um, but it didn't end there. This, this depression lasted for months and it went into years getting rid of the, the deeper stuff. So I'd say the depression ended after maybe four months or so, maybe three to four months. But honestly, this was like 2011, it's 2019 right now. All the, the doubts and fears, the regrets and the blames and everything in my head I'll be honest with you, maybe at the beginning of this year, I'm like 90% at peace with myself. It has been that long, almost 10 years that I've held on to so much and I've had dreams and nightmares of, of, of that, that, um, that time, that year that I'll, I'll remember that year for as long as I live. And besides the nightmares and everything at night, um, I would have triggers here and there that would give me these feelings again of that time. And it was, it was something in the air. Maybe it was a smell or it was cold, the, the weather outside. And these little triggers would get me to feel what I felt back then. So I dealt with this for years, years, years down the line. And um, I can tell you right now that I am in a better place, way better. And I'm no longer blaming myself for all that stuff and I've let go. And I'll tell you right now in the video, I've let go of that and I've, I've moved on. And it took that long, guys. And um, there were little things here and there, little little moments here and there that I can't really get through all of them in one video. But it took a while to 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 find peace in myself. And throughout those those years. All the videos, all the pictures, all the, all the all my content you see on social media, all my lessons you see in my class that I, I preach to you guys when I train clients or I teach classes, everything you see of me is based upon all the struggles I went through. So I'm not just one of those people where I can preach the gospel and I haven't lived it. I know it, I've lived it. And that's why all the videos I make, all the content I put out, and I put myself out there a lot, 
I could care less what people think of me. It's all for you guys. I don't want you to go through what I went through. I don't want you to have all that pain and all that, that blame on yourself. You know, we all make mistakes. Whether it's your fault or not, who cares? We all make mistakes. And we cannot carry this big bag on our shoulders, this backpack of mistakes and, and, and regrets and everything. We cannot. We have to let it go after a while. And if I look back now, and I could talk to the person back then, the demon of back then, I would just tell them, you know, it's, it's going to be okay. You're going to get through this. And people love you. People, people really love you. Um, I needed that at the time. I needed love. I just wanted to be around people, and I just, I didn't have a lot. I had two two people I could I could count on one hand that would check on me and stuff like that. But I needed, I needed someone just to say, you know what, you're gonna be okay. I love you, and I come out with this video now to tell you guys that whatever you're going through right now, I promise you, it's gonna be okay. You just gotta hang in there. You gotta go through it. I don't know what you're going through, and I can't. I can't relate to every situation. I can't tell you it's gonna be. It's gonna be okay next week. I can't tell you it's gonna be okay next month. I hung on to all this for years, but I can tell you that there's people that love you. I love you, and you know, that's the one thing that you wanna you wanna remember when someone is going through depression is. Be there for them. Be that ear to listen. You don't always have to chime in with your your advice. Sometimes people just want to be heard and they just want you to be around. Be around them as much as possible. Go out with them. Take them out to lunch. Just hang out with them. But the worst thing to go through when you're depressed is to be alone. It's the saddest thing. And remember this. You're not alone. You're not alone. A lot of people love you. We're here for you. I'm here for you. You guys want to DM me after this. You want to message me. You want to ask for advice or or you want to hear. Guys, I'll listen to you. But please, I, I beg of you, don't do anything crazy. Don't, don't try to end your life. Don't do any of that. A lot of people love you. You have love all around you. Don't let that one person or those few people you know get the best of you or put you down or whatnot and you're gonna go through a grieving process it's 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 completely normal you're gonna go through regrets you're gonna go through blaming yourself you're gonna go through anger you're gonna go through this long grieving process that I can't even tell you how long it takes but if you hang on and you hang in there it's gonna be okay I promise you and I'm I'm living proof of hanging in there and going through a lot of crap in my life. I went through a lot. All in all in the meanwhile of still running a business and um, trying to make a relationship work with my son and just a lot of things. But I'm glad I held on so I, that I can share this story with you guys. But I, that's my story. There's a lot of other people out there that have it way worse than me. I went through it with for four months of depression and after that I just went through some demons inside of me. And they come off from time to time. I'm not gonna lie, once in a while the demons still come out, but I don't let them stay out too long. I put them right back in their place. And if you got me 10 years ago or so, I couldn't do that. There's no way I could put them. I have to self-medicate myself. But now, they pop out, I put them right back in their place because I love myself. I'm confident, I have that confidence again. And I know that there's people that love me and that care about me that I can count on. Find those people that love you and care about you and just hold on to them as tight as you can for as long as you can. But don't ever think that no one cares or loves you. There are a lot of people that love you and care about you, I promise you. Hang in there, be strong, fight. You're gonna get through this. And that's my story about 
depression and what I've gone through in my life. Thanks for watching this. I appreciate it. Not everyone will get through this video. This video is probably about a half hour long, give or take. Um, but I really appreciate you guys taking the time to listen to this. And we're coming out with brand new episodes of the show. We have some guests lined up that we're working hard on getting. And before I go, I just want to say um, I love you. And whatever you're going through, hang in there. It's going to be okay. There's a light at the end of the tunnel. They come in different forms, but there's a light at the end of the tunnel. And I love the hell out of you. And a lot of other people do. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you on the next episode.